should check the weight. This is actually right after I did all that list last night. Ow, ow, fuck. Bang my fucking toe. Fuck, man. It's your fault, you distracted me. Boom. You low weigh in 167.4. So that's damn good, man. That just shows you're making progress. Um, but again, like I said, just because you have one new low weigh in, it's a good thing, but it can be a result of a lot of things. You could be in result of dropping muscle glycogen because of a drop in calories. It can be the loss of obviously water. It can be because you had a refeed day, so you dropped down cortisol, so you kind of had that whoosh effect, which Matt Ogus has even talked about on his channel. The best thing so that you get accurate data, guys, is to just take an average cluster of weigh-ins, all right? So when you get a new low weigh-in, it's good, okay? But it's also at the same time, you know, it's a very gray area sort of thing. You can't just look at it and be like, that is definite fat loss. When you see consistent weigh-ins, and you're gonna have fluctuations, you're gonna have peaks and valleys from multiple different things. Like, dude, weigh-ins can be affected from so many different things. Weigh-ins can be affected from your, your carbohydrate intake. Weigh-ins can be affected from your sleep. Weigh-ins can be affected from change in hydration in the body, because of your actual training volume changing. Like, it's so much stuff can affect your weigh-ins. Best thing to do is to take the average of like a week's worth of weigh-ins, which you know what, I'll throw on the screen right here so you guys can see the average weigh-ins. Back isn't looking too bad. Let's see if we can get it in there. Focus, bitch. You're not gonna focus, are you? Ah, uh, whatever. The average weigh-in is the way to go. It's gonna set you up in a position to make basically the best decision of what you need to do with your macros, your training, your cardio, all that sort of stuff. So 167.4, and I am feeling fucking good today, so let's get this shit done. I'm just in fail mode today. I'm spilling shit, I'm banging my toes. I feel like drop, drop a dumbbell on my face today. Smells funny. Cheers, guys. Okay, guys, so I have 245 grams of egg whites, five slices of center cut bacon, two slices of toast that were of that lovely bacon grease in it. That comes out to this right here. We obviously, this is breakfast. What I am going to do pre-workout on the milk, I'm gonna have two apples, and I'm gonna have a monster. Don't you love when you eat something like bacon? Like fucking fried chicken, your mouth be all greasy. Episode four, guys, and man, I am having so much goddamn fun doing this series. Like in the past, I had never really taken you know my channel so serious, and I never thought I would be having this much fun. And it feels just so organic for me to produce you know these episodes, this content week after week. But um, man, I'm really enjoying it, and I really hope you guys are enjoying it too. So here I am on the uh, the flat dumbbell press. I'm doing 95s for sets of six to eight. I did four sets of six to eight reps on that. And as you guys can see, just excuse me on the posing update, I am absolutely leaner this week. I mean, look at the sides of my legs over there as I'm at the very, uh, at the contracted position of these uh, chest supported rows. Like, my legs are really, really, really starting to separate. And that's how you know you're really getting lean, guys. Is when you start seeing it in your legs, because your legs tend to hold more body fat, not for all, but for the, the vast majority, um, it usually comes off there last. In particular, the glutes and hammies. But when you start to see deeper lines and striations in the legs, just separation, then you know that uh, you're really starting to get lean. And it's crazy because I started lean, so those really, really 
cool looking changes are just happening like really really early on so can you imagine guys when i'm another seven to nine to ten plus pounds lighter it's it's gonna look pretty nasty um yeah, so I'm on the overhead press. Guys, I haven't been trying to really get strong on that exercise. I'm just doing the minimum amount of volume required to just maintain my delts. And then as we know, like I want to build up my traps. I want to build up my upper back. So I am doing these power shrugs. I threw these in on both upper body days. And I kind of, I kind of auto-regulate these. But I do like them. And it is a relatively new movement to me. I probably, even before dieting, had only done it for a couple of months. Um, I want to say maybe like two months at the tops. So I've never really done shrugs. It wasn't my favorite exercise. And then I got these. I call these the Arnold row because you know every time I do these, I think of pumping iron when Arnold's got the like the, the red sterner on, but he's he's got insane forward lean and he pulls the he pulls the row way back. But yeah, I love this exercise. I throw it in at the end just to get more volume. Plus, I get more range of motion than I do with that uh, hammer strength one, which I think is really good for shoulder health and just to get more volume in as well because it's going to help with obviously your posterior chain. Rowing, for most, I think should be done in higher volumes than actually pressing because most people seem to be anterior chain dominant from all the pressing that they do. And then I just did some cable curls. I'm switching it up with this movement. I normally do dumbbell work like I've mentioned in the earlier episodes, but it is good to switch it up from time to time. But I will be announcing my coach at the end of this episode in the new program that I'm going to be doing. You guys, once again, thank you for coming back and watching episode four of Chasing Aesthetics. I am having a ton of fun doing this series. It has been a blast. I don't know how long it's going to go, but it's going to go as long as it takes for me to get absolutely peeled. I mentioned that there is going to be an announcement for this coming episode as to who my coach is, and that is Chris Elkins from CuttingEdgePhysiques.com. You guys go and check him out if you don't know who he is already. You probably do, he's got a pretty big Instagram and social media following. I do trust him, I've been following him for years, we've talked off and on and sort of built that relationship, which is why I trust him. So we're gonna be working together through the first six plus months, six or so, or even longer months of uh, 2018. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to get an, ext an extremely, I don't wanna say the best shape of my life, but yeah, technically the best shape of my life, even though I'm gonna be suffering and hurting, which you guys are gonna be seeing. But um, highly recommend him, awesome dude. And the next episode, you guys are going to get all the details as to everything that we're doing what nutrition looks like, what training looks like, all the details of the entire contest prep season. I am currently running Max Hype, his Max Hype training program, which is a ton of fun. Go and get a copy of it. It is very, very comprehensive, especially in terms of training for natural athletes like myself and probably a lot of you guys who watch me. So if you're new to the channel and not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification button so you guys know when each episode comes out, even though technically I already tell you when each episode comes out, which is every Monday. But sometimes I might get pushed back, like when it was Christmas, I pushed that day back because on this past Monday, you guys probably just wanted to enjoy Christmas and not watch my goddamn episode. I'm excited. I'm excited for 2018, and I hope you're excited for 2018 too. Just absolutely just own your year, man. Demolish it. Take control of your fucking life. If you have dreams, aspirations, goals, whatever they are, whatever they are, don't let anyone criticize them. They're gonna criticize them anyway, but take people's opinion, guys, with a grain of salt. Okay, have their opinion here, but have your opinion way up here. Your opinion matters most. Your goals matter most. Prioritize those, take people's opinion, all right? See the positive, see the negative, and see how it can bring you value, all right? And that, that, go, that goes for me. Like, I, I take my opinion as number one in all things that I do in life. And I'm gonna leave you guys with a training edit of me crushing max hype. Three, two, one. Motherfucker, I'm ill.